What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So, I got a lot of good stuff for you guys coming up, so I'm going to be real active on the channel. So, buckle up, stay tuned. Got a lot of interesting topics I want to bring to you, some news and that kind of thing. Now, I want to talk about this. Miguel Cotto, um, definitely a fan-friendly type of fighter, a people's champion, if you will. I love watching Miguel Cotto fight. I'm a longtime fan, and he tweeted this out today, basically saying he's not going to be fighting for the remainder of the year. Instead, he'll make his return to the ring after the Sergio Martinez history-setting fight, and he's going to do that in early 2015. Me, personally, I love this move, and that's based on who he was linked to possibly fight the fourth quarter of this year, and it was someone like an Andy Lee. Personally, Andy Lee just does nothing for Miguel Cotto. Miguel, when you have an illustrious resume like Miguel Cotto does, and if anybody disputes win or lose Miguel Cotto's resume, you don't know shit about boxing. You might as well get the 4-4 uh, and put it to your temple and just blow your fucking brains out because you don't know what you're talking about. He has a great resume from Mayweather to Pacquiao to Margarito twice to Josh Clotty when Josh Clotty was, you know what I mean? A guy to really, really watch for. He's fought virtually everybody. Sergio Martinez. He fought Shane Mosley. Fought Zab Judah. And he didn't fight Mosley when people were talking about Mosley needs to hang him up. He didn't fight Zab Judah when people lost respect for Zab Judah. You know what I mean? He fought a lot of those guys. Randall Bailey, Pauli Malinaji. The list goes on and on. So, great resume. To me... I think he set history in the Sergio Martinez. He did better than a lot of people thought he would do. I thought Sergio Martinez would ultimately be too big and perhaps too slick if he was remotely healthy. And it doesn't look like he was healthy. No excuses. Cotto did his thing and beat the shit out of Sergio Martinez. And I was happy for him. He set history. And to follow it up with an Andy Lee fight didn't sit well with me. Especially since I consider this the year of the cherry picker. We had... Broner and Taylor, which, you know what I mean? Broner, as much shit as he talks, he should be fighting John Molina, who's making diss records about him. Lucas Matisse, who's a champion. Lamont Peterson, but they're too good of friends. Danny Garcia, oh, but they're too good of friends. Danny Garcia is fighting Rod Salka, and the list goes on and on. Chris Algieri and, and Pacquiao. Not that Algieri's a bad dude, he's a likable guy, but at the end of the day, Pacquiao is choosing an opponent from a lower weight division fighting at a catch weight when there's credible welterweights who have been patiently waiting taking welterweight challenges the division Pacquiao has been fighting at and looking good in fights people like Keith Thurman Sean Porter just lost you got guys like Kell Brook uh, Mayweather and obviously the Mayweather fight is the hardest to make but point being there are credible welterweights who have earned their place you know what I mean and they want that big title fight so I just I'm not really keen on Pacquiao going down to a catch weight to fight a guy who whose biggest win was tooth and nail, you know what I mean, against Ruslan Provodnikov. Anyway, without getting too sidetracked, um back to Miguel Cotto. He's just a hell of a fighter and I really respect Mar uh, Miguel Cotto and I like what he did to bounce back from the Margarito like quote unquote uh cheating fight and come back and beat him. He's just I mean, he's all heart. And I really like this. So I like this decision from Cotto. I really, at this point of his career, with such a great resume, I don't want to see him take watered down fights. I'm not saying he has to fight the hardest fights known to man. I'm not saying he has to fight Triple G, even though I would love it. I'm not, I'm not saying he has to fight Canelo, even though I would love it. I think he should, at some point before he hangs him up, fight those guys, uh, or some of them. But there's other good fights that are a little bit they would give him a little bit more pull and they would add a bigger statement or stamp to his legacy other than Andy Lee so I'm glad he's choosing to sit out yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea um, people are like oh it's just it's a tune-up fight you don't come from a history setting performance and looking that great against Sergio Martinez to a fucking tune-up fight with Andy Lee who barely fucking won his last fight against a prospect against Jackson or whatever um, he barely won that. It was a come from behind John Molina, Mickey Bay type victory in the last round. And he, he clipped the prospect. The prospect got too um, confident and he got he got clipped and murder she wrote. So props to Andy Lee for that. But fighting Cotto is just a different ballgame. Like I said, I would rather see if Cotto were to fight at the end of the year. There are some 
credible like New York natives, Danny Jacobs, guys like Curtis Stevens, um, guys like Peter Quillen. There's Triple G, who's now fighting Marco Antonio Rubio. Just different matches for him. And if he's not going to fight someone that we respect, someone that we want to pay top dollar to see Miguel Cotto fight, then this, to me, is the best decision for him. Just to sit out the rest of the year, enjoy the fights. You got uh, the Marcos Maidana Mayweather rematch. You got Chris Algieri and Manny Pacquiao fighting. You got Broner fighting this weekend. There's other good fights. You can watch the outcome of Triple G and Rubio. Just sit back and watch it as a fan and spend time with your family because the Andy Lee fight, when I when I heard of that, I was just like pointless. You know what I mean? It's stupid. It doesn't really do anything for him. So I like this decision by Miguel Cotto. I look forward to him brighten, um, right in the front of uh, next, next year. You know what I mean? I'll definitely tune into his next fight. Hopefully it's a good, solid name. And it's it's not the end of the year yet, so who knows what will happen in boxing. You know what I mean? Upsets happen. Triple G has a tough test in, in terms of Rubio, so anything can happen. We have to see what happens with Mayweather's fight, with Pacquiao's fight. This could scramble things up, so I like the decision by Cotto to sit out the rest of the year. You already did a great thing and set history in the Sergio Martinez fight. Props to that, and see what opportunities present themselves right in 2015 let me know what you guys think miguel cotto sitting out for the rest of the year not fighting an andy lee tune-up fight to me i just again i feel tune-up fights are in place like if miguel cotto was fighting multiple times a year and he took a, a soft touch tune-up fight that's cool or if fighters are taking bad losses and they have to work things out then okay that makes sense to take a tune-up fight amir khan got knocked out danny garcia cool Take a tune-up fight against Carlos Molina, an undefeated guy coming up and wait. I get that. That makes sense to me. Take a soft touch to get your mojo back, your rhythm back. But Miguel Cotto is not in that predicament. He did uh, come off two back-to-back -back losses to Mayweather and to Trout. But he ran through Devin Rodriguez, and he fucking ran through Sergio Martinez. So I think he's back in the winner's column for two solid fights, two wins. He likes the partnership with Freddie Roach. Tuna fight really shouldn't be happening. So, like I said, I like the decision by Kodo. Make sure you like this video. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.